Alrighty, we're going to dive into a new project here. This one's going to be a Christmas exchange generator and emailer. Um, family and I like to exchange gifts via kind of a secret Santa method, essentially. But there's we have spouses that we always want to give gifts to, but the extended family, we just want to give one random gift to a big group of us, so we make a secret Santa through everybody. Um, and with that, we have some restrictions of not wanting to pick your spouse, but having the spouse included and everything like that. So with that, we're going to create a little Python program to generate all of our exchange recipients and then put some restrictions on to who can be a recipient for each person. And thirdly, we want to send out the email so that uh, we don't have to manually do that as well. Rather than using a notebook, we're going to use um, Microsoft's Visual Studio Code. Uh, works pretty well with Python. It's free uh, and we can do a lot more stuff than with a notebook, especially with editing and modifying classes rather than a little, it's a little more difficult with a notebook. So we're going to start off make this a class um, Christmas exchange. You're welcome to call that whatever you want. Um, then we need to have our init generator. Uh, we're going to have this be generated two different ways. One possibly without a file and one with a file. So we're going to throw this name in here. This file name is going to be a string, of course. But we're going to have it default to none, so it's not required. And this generator doesn't return anything special. So we're going to first just lay out everything that we want to have this class do. Kind of a, it's a good way to mentally break it all up so that you know how to break it down into pieces and tackle them one at a time. So what do we need to do? Uh, create the class. We need to be able to read all the participants as one method. Um, that we want to have done through a file, probably a CSV. Um, we're going to store it all internally into the class so we don't need to return anything. Just put pass for the time being. Next we will do, that's one method of getting them. The other method is we're going to ask command prompt to tell us, ask for participants, self. That one, you don't need any functional internal. So we'll just leave that as self, uh, pass. We got a way, we got two ways to read from a file, the participants, and one way to ask for the participants. We need to Correct that typo there, participants. Um, next is we want to be able to select names. That'll also return none. Most of these are just going to keep all the data internal to the class. We're going to store all these names in a pandas data frame so we do need we do want just a simple way to get that data frame and then we're going to create a property and we're just going to call that people data get the whole data frame there so self so this property will let us just type the class variable name dot people data and i'll return our internal people data data frame. Um, we haven't defined that yet, 
but that is under self .people data. We get the participants, we've selected the names, we now need to probably have a way to print the results nicely so we can verify that they are correct. That's just printing. So that also returns none. Um, we can also throw in a default print and print the method. Print. In case we don't want to print, once we do get it working, we can just do send emails. Um, and sending the emails, we're going to do through Gmail. So we're going to create a connect to Gmail method. Do all the authentication for that or who is sending them. All right. And if we want to use this multiple years in a row, we're going to want to save all this stuff. So we're going to write it. Write um, results. And we'll do that to a file name as well. Move that as a string. Now we'll return them. All right. Let's see here. We got the reading. We got the writing. Um, we got some printing. We got some sending emails. I think that's good for now. So we will start diving into each of these portions here. Since we don't have a file already, we're going to just start with the ask for participants method, but to actually have this run something when we run the file, we're actually going to create our if main, sorry, if name equals main. We're going to create, initially, all we need is an Xmas equals Christmas exchange. Not passing a file name because we're not doing it from the file to initially, but to do it through the ask for participants. But how does it get to the ask for participants? We got to actually generate our init, init which will be um, something as simple as self dot people data. That's going to be our gen our pandas. But for now, it's empty. Next is if file name is none. We want to do read. Self dot read with file name. It's only variable, so we're just leaving it there. And then otherwise else do self dot ask for participants. I think that's all we need for the generator right now. So we're only going to start with the not including a file name to start with. So we'll just dive into the ask for participants. With that, we need to do some inputs. We're generating this for a bunch of siblings and their spouses. So we want to ask for 
who the person is that's giving it. And that'll create a prompt on the command line to enter in the name. But we got tell the user what they're asking for. So name of participant. Add a little space there so it doesn't start typing right after. Gives a little clear endpoint. We need to ask for who the partner is that we're including this so that spouses don't have to give to their spouse in the secret Santa in addition to their own gift, their own gift exchange. So we'll do input um, name of partner to as well. Add as as well because we're going to assume that both the person and the partner both want to be giving gifts and not to each other. So we'll put that logic in later, but this way we don't have to ask for John who has a partner of Jane and also Jane who has a partner of John. We'll just automatically add both of them. So we don't have to leave both of them, but we'll also leave the option of leave blank if none. If you don't care about the partner logic, then we'll just tell them to leave it blank. If you happen to be doing a gift exchange that doesn't need it. More people. We'll just label that function as more input. Add more people. Make this cyclical. Um, we'll help them out. Yes or no. So that it's easier for us to determine what they meant. And all this needs to be indented a bit to add it inside of a while loop. While more So while true, um, but more isn't a bool, boolean. So we need to do another variable, more people, people. And that should start off as more people, it's true. Always need more people, right? So more people, but now we need to deal with this actual more, yes or no. So we'll do the simple way. We don't necessarily care what they enter as long as they say no. So we'll just assume anything other than a no will be a yes. So more, lower, so we don't have to deal with capitalization or lowercase. We'll just make the more input of any version of no lowercase. So if no lower more dot lower equals no or a lot of times people like to only use the initials for yes and no. So we'll do or more dot lower equals just n. We'll go more people equals false. No more people. That'll end it after this one cycle. Now we got our person and our partner. We now need to add those to a list that we can add to our data frame eventually. So we'll go if partner, because we did have the option of leaving partner blank. So if partner's blank, we're going to go people, we need all the people, so we'll make this people list, uh, and we want to add the two people, the person and the partner, 
And we're going to go people list uh, end partner. person. That way we had both John with a partner of Jane and Jane with a partner of John. Don't have to ask for both of the people. But we're appending this, so of course we create it. People list equals an empty list. There we go. Okay, so we've now added it. If they have a partner, but else they don't have a partner, we need to do people list dot append person none for the partner. All right, so we've asked for names. We've added them to a list. We will now Continue to cycle through this until more is no long isn't returned with a no. And then once we are done with that whole while loop, we can do a self dot people data and make that into a actual data frame. Pandas dot data frame. So Nice part about this program here gives you nice little helpers. So PD, as it commonly is imported as from pandas, we can quickly get a quick fix of add import pandas as PD add to the top of our list. Scrolling up here, we'll now see it through in add pandas as PD and now our function and everything turns green because it knows it's imported correctly. And so how do we want to do this? We made this as a list before, so we can just throw this into data frame, PD dot data frame, throw our list in there, people list. All right, now we know what those columns are, but pandas doesn't. So we will label those with columns equals our two column names, name of the person that's giving, and who their partner is. Well, there are two column names. Simple as that. And for testing sakes, we're going to go print self dot people data right at the end there. All right. So that, in theory, should work right there or as participant. So making sure we're in the right folder down here in our terminal, we're going to run it with Python 3 is what we're using just for sake of pointing it out. I'm on Python 3.10.7 now. So Python 3, then our file name is Xmas exchange dot pi run that alrighty that didn't work so now we need to do a little troubleshooting go back to the beginning see if check our main first of all actually at the end here just goes Xmas Christmas exchange where does that go that goes to the init initializer which all we're asking for is People data is none, if file name is none, else this. We want here. So we're going to go in and go print, test. We'll run this again. No change. So we know else, we're not getting inside this else. So we'll just drag it up a little more, a little broader. Make sure we update that white space, run it again. All right, we got test printed out here. Okay, so we get here. Let's look at this logic again. So if file name is none, so we have no file name. As you read it out again, sometimes just reading it out loud helps. 
we'd need a file name if we're going to actually read from a file. So it's not is none, but is not none. There was our typo, but we'll double check. Throw this back in. Throw this back in the correct else statement. Run this one more time. We did get test and hey, name of participant. Throw in John. Name a partner to add, Jane, just so we make the letters similar so that we can easily see. Add more people, yes. Name a participant, Sue and Sam. N more people, hey, we know we don't need a yes or no, we just need anything but a no to keep going. We'll just enter that in. Name a participant, um, we got John, Jane, Sam, Sue, Tom, um, Tammy, and Paul. Oh, or add more people. No, this should work. So just testing it. Yep. Go back to name of participant. Paul. Name partner as well. Leave blank if none. Paul doesn't have a partner. Add more people. We'll just do a lower uppercase N. Ends it. And like we threw in there, printing the data frame, we get our name, partner columns, John, Jane, Jane and John, Sue, Sam, Sam, Sue, Tom, Tammy, Tammy, Tom, Paul, and none. No extra blank one with the none, so perfect. Seems like our logic worked. We got our whole list of participants inside of a data frame. Alrighty, now that we got our command line input working. We're going to actually jump over select names and dive into writing the data and then reading the data so that we don't have to always type those in even when we're testing out things here. So we can just quickly get this saved from the ask for participants into a file and then take that file and just read it in as new participants here. So can't read anything, we don't have a file for it yet, but we can jump to the end and do the right results. Yeah, we don't have results technically, but we do have the first two columns, name and partner. So with that, what do we need to do? We need a file name and we're going to actually make that optional. So we'll leave that as none because you can pass in a file name or we can generate it. We know roughly what we're doing here. So what do we need to do? Start off with if file name is none, make sure it's none and is none, meaning that they haven't passed it in. So what do we need to do? We need to generate what the file name is. File name is, what would be a logical name for this? Maybe Xmas results. No, because we always want it as an input. So Xmas exchange. And then maybe the year. How do we know what the year is though? We will throw that in above here with year equals date time dot today I believe is the right function here import date time not today but date dot today there we go that'll give us a full timestamp of today now but we don't need just now we need just the year so dot year gives us a year so now this is nice and blue christmas underscore exchange underscore year is what the file name will be but we need an extension also of dot csv comma separated value good and simple 
we have a file name whether or not they gave it to us with the right results so we just need to turn this file I mean turn this data frame into a file a CSV file thankfully pandas has a wonderful method for this all we have to do is pull up our people data data frame and go to CSV all that needs has lots of possibilities, but all it needs is the file name actually. So file name, pass that in. We're also going to remove the index. We don't care about the index of the names. It's a small, small list. And we're not actually looking at the indexes on the CSV. So we'll do index equals false. All right. So Normally you can just go Python 3 file name, but we want to stay in Python. So we're going to go dash i, then file xx. Now you'll notice after we ran through the if name equals main list of commands, it dropped us straight into a Python interpreter. So we can now get to our Xmas function. We can see type Xmas is the Christmas exchange class. And we can go Xmas dot write results. We'll do both methods test file name dot CSV and we'll do it once without. Messed up here. I forgot. Year gets returned as an int, not as a string, so we need to make that year inside the file name into a string actually. Quit out of this Python interpreter so we can use the updated file. Oh. Also, one more thing before we forget, we left that test in here of the generator. Delete that out. Okay. Now we can go xmas dot write results test file name dot cs csv parenthesis and then we'll go one more with no file name seem to work both cases all right exit out of the Python interpreter and then we'll go ls test yep there's our CSV we'll even go cat test we get our name partner and then all of ours with our nice little comma separated values then we can also do ls, what do we call it, xmas, and there's our xmas csv, so cat that as well, xmas, perfect, seems to have worked pretty well, alrighty, so from there, what do we need to do, we need to write the results, just like pandas was nice and convenient for writing to a csv file it's super convenient for reading so all we need to do is self dot people data equals pd dot read csv and inside there we need to pass in our file name. Uh, have you not known what the file name is prior and what files the person has used? We're gonna not leave not auto-generate any names. They can if they wanted to put that in, they can code it in. But we are going to just do that. And with that we're going to start with this in case we start reading to that default. That way it stays 
as default blank, just name, not blank, but just name and partner, no additional columns of our results for testing sake. Whereas we can still keep saving to that default Xmas Exchange 2023. Alrighty, now that we got that backbone of the whole project done, we're going to take a break here and in the next video we will do the emailing portion specifically with Gmail show you how Python and Gmail can interact so that you can send these emails without actually having to write them yourself as well as make sure that they don't go into the spam filter of other people's emails with that let me know how you liked this longer format rather than breaking down the videos and any other questions that you might have let me know thanks for watching